Morley, as a neuroscientist, a psychiatrist uh, specializing in biological uh, psychiatry, you deal with body-mind interactions. Mm -hmm. um, what can you say about the importance of psychosomatic medicine, of how the body and the mind work together? The interactions between the mind and the body uh, have become hugely important, and both mainstream medicine and mainstream psychiatry now realize that uh, unless you can heal the mind, you're not, never going to heal the body and never going to get a healthy body. Take uh, me through that, how that works. About uh, 20, 25 years ago, you know, people sort of thought the mind and the body was separate. Mm -hmm. And uh, the classic experiments done by Herbert Benson at Harvard who showed that uh, meditation induced a relaxation response. The relaxation response then pr produced very profound physiologic effects, not only just on your heart rate, on your breathing, but also on your immune system, on your white blood cells. And then now people have shown it affects maybe more than 5,000 different genes. So mm. the relaxation response fundamentally changes gene expression. So the whole field of epigenetics that's uh, become, you know, risen to the uh, top over the last 10 years basically says while genes sort of, you may be born with a certain set of uh, genetic predispositions, your environment changes whether the genes are expressed or not. So you can turn on or turn off certain genes. And, and I think that is the main mechanism at a fundamental cellular level through which uh, uh, having a healthy mind uh, reduces your risk for disease. Virtually every disease that's been studied, from uh, heart disease to risk your heart attacks, survival from heart attacks, recovery from stroke, uh, recovery from uh, uh, cancer, breast cancer, uh, improvement and uh, recovery from major depression, recovery from anxiety disorders, recovery from schizophrenia, every one of these conditions, uh, mind-related uh, uh, techniques, for example, meditation, for example, yoga, mindfulness, based uh, uh, stress reduction, all of these have been shown to dramatically improve outcomes. And it seems like stress reduction is the core uh, objective that really seems to be the key to unlock all of these uh, very beneficial results. Correct. Uh, so the, the fundamental theory, at least, is that uh, uh, all of these sort of mindfulness practices uh, boosts your parasympathetic system. It induces the relaxation response. It might reduce the hyperactivity of a system called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. So there's less cortisol being released. You don't view sort of uh, uh, emotion, uh, threatening uh, stimuli as being like as threatening. You sort of see stressful situations as being an opportunity for improvement and building resilience rather than seeing them as a threat. Uh, and through these uh, chemical changes, uh, they affect every system in the body. Well, let's go through the mechanism of yeah. how that occurs. Uh, the pituitary hypothalamic system that produces cortisol, what, why does that do that normally? That's a, a protective reaction if I'm going to have a fight with you or something. So there are two systems in our body um, that are critically related to stress. The first is the sympathetic nervous system, which is sort of the uh, fight. fight or flight fight. system. You know, you see a bear uh, when you were a caveman or a tiger, and your body has to go on full alert and it drains all the resources from everything else just to make sure that you can outrun uh, the bear or the tiger. So yeah, that's or outrun this, you. Or, exactly. <laughs> so that's the sympathetic nervous system. Now what happens is if you're repeatedly exposed to, to stress, so chronic stress, especially the kind of stress that you're not able to overcome, mm -hmm. then your body's baseline sympathetic nervous system gets hyperactivated. The same thing happens to your cortisol HPA axis system. So as your stress response increases, as you're exposed to more and more stresses and you're not able to cope with them, uh, there's more cortisol being produced. And as there's more cortisol being produced, cortisol actually has a toxic effect on nerve cells in the brain. Mm. Studies in animals in primate models have shown that cortisol can damage nerve cells in the hippocampus and the amygdala. There are other studies that show urban dwellers who are exposed to stress uh, have exaggerated responses in their amygdala. So in depression, for example, what we classically see is the amygdala is the emotional thermostat. It's almost like the thermostat gets permanently turned on at a much higher level yeah. so that you're kind of flooding your body with all kinds of stress. So it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. And, and that's the vicious cycle that I think is deadly. Yeah. And that can be controlled through some of these Correct. techniques. So whether it's exercise or yoga or, or stress med meditative practices to reduce stress, which reduces the cortisol and increases the parasympathetic system, Correct. which 
which puts the body into more homeostasis or more, more normal condition. Correct. Right. Studies have shown that after a 20-minute bout of exercise, your cortisol level drops. Mm. Uh, and with continued practice, you're sort of down-regulating it back to a normal state. So your responses to stress become more like that of a surfer. You know, you're surfing the ocean. You can either drown under the water or you can learn how to ride the waves. <laughs> and that's, that's what a meditator does. And this used to be something that was like a peripheral or alternative medicine, but right. now it's, it's central. central. It's probably more important than every pill we have. If yoga were available as a medicine, it would be the world's best-selling drug. 